Welcome to Gold Derby. I'm senior editor Denton Davidson here with Jamie Lee McIntosh and Louisa Abel, the hair and makeup department heads tasked with creating looks for Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer. Uh, congratulations, both of you, on the success of this film. I'd love to hear from each of you how the film was presented to you and, and what was it intimidating going in knowing this is large scale, 70 millimeter IMAX production. Your work is going to be under a very close microscope for that. Well, thanks for having us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get right into it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right into it. Um, close up, IMAX. Yeah, it's terrifying. Um, it was my first time working with IMAX and with Chris. Um, Louisa has many times, so she was a guiding force for me. Um, and it's just, I mean, you need to have an eye for detail in our line of work anyway. But in that world, it is extreme. And also, it has to look right in camera on the day because Chris is not going to be adjusting anything in post. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, it does help having worked on it before and um, also working with someone like Chris because... Uh, you're allowed to test very early on. We did a lot of tests on this to know the parameters of what we were dealing with, knowing what the close-ups were, understanding the black and white versus the color film. And uh, so that, all of that really helped. And when you're working on a biopic or a true story, um, how important it is, is it for you to, to get the character to look like the person they're playing? How, how close do you want to get them? Are you trying to get exactly there or do you just want it to be realistic? Where do you find that balance? Well, that was one of the things we met up really early on and had um, meetings with Chris initially and then had meetings with the actors when they first went in for fitting. So we were all there together. And one of the things that was said was um, not that we weren't going to do lookalikes on this. We were going to make sort of a flavor of each character and then really make it so that the film is sort of believable you know without trying to go down that route yeah I think because we're it's yeah as you say historical figures we've got period that we're focusing on and then the aging and of course trying to keep it as real as possible so as Louisa was saying it's like we would reference those historical figures and the period but kind of just grab what we thought would be necessary to work on that specific cast member that yeah. we were dealing with. Yeah, and we had a huge amount of research. So we were very lucky. We had many, many photos, obviously, of Oppenheimer and Kitty, but right down um, to all of the people in Los Alamos. So we knew really specifically what all of them looked like. And then we just went through with Chris and kind of picked what we could pull out that would give a flavor of all of the characters. And I heard Chris wasn't really into wigs. So haircuts all around. <laughs> yeah. And trying to find things that will, those haircuts and lengths that will work through that time span. Um, so that also meant that any graying that I was needing to do or um, hairline adjustments and thinning and things like that needed to happen on the head of hair that we had for that specific cast member. So we used a couple of hair pieces when we had to, um, but most of it was coming up with different recipes and techniques for each cast member, depending on how much gray we needed to add, how much, like what color we were working with to start with, and then the hairline adjustments as well. So all the cast had to fully lean into, into that world and they did, they loved it. Yeah, we had an interview with Killian and he said he'll miss the, the cast and crew of Oppenheimer, but he will not miss his haircuts. No, <laughs> I think he has been um, quoted as saying it's the worst haircut he's ever had. Um, <laughs> and I think I'll, I'll just finish that and maybe correct it and say maybe the worst hairstyle. I think the cut technically itself was not bad. Yeah. <laughs> Was was anyone the most complicated for you? Because Robert Downey Jr.'s look, I mean, he had a lot of changes to to his hair as well. So talk about working with with him and what you needed to do to transform his his look. Yeah, um, that probably technically was the most difficult for me. Um, 
and because of keeping the continuity up on it. Um, Robert would also have decent chunks of time that he wouldn't be working. So it would be a whole kind of reset every time he started again. But um, adjusting his hairline, so taking that back, probably removing about a third of the amount of his hair through the top completely, um, shaving that right down, and then bleaching his hair through the top also. So I had the ability to go darker gray through to white gray, depending on where in that timeline we were. So that was just done with airbrushing and hand painting um, and just changing his style slightly. So when he's younger, it was more fluffier to appear fuller. And then when he we see him in his older um, stages, it was more slicked back and you can kind of see through that thinning a little bit more. So yeah, and with the shooting in the black and white, um, the contrast of his regrowth that would come through on the top would show pretty quickly. I'd get like a millimeter of regrowth and it would be like I could just see black dots <laughs> on his scalp. So that was, uh, staying on top of that was, yeah, it was a challenge. It was good though. I loved it. <laughs> Louisa, talk about the aging process and or de or de-aging process um, that you had to do with the makeup on this film because you have I think I read it's like 17 or 18 characters that had to be aged because right, yeah. yeah so yeah <laughs> so yeah I mean I think overall we have like 73 speaking roles and then right. and obviously you know that's period and and real people and then 18 agings but within that most of the characters had sort of three to five different stages of aging. So one of the biggest things that we did at the beginning was to figure out what the continuity for that was. So talk it through with Chris, do tests so that we could get some practical visuals that he liked or, you know, what felt were close. And then I we actually did some digital stuff so that we could show him kind of an arc, a visual arc of what we could do for Kitty, you know, and Oppenheimer and Strauss, and then try to then do a, a blended group to ba basically be able to see all the people that age the most as a group and then start to work from there. So then we just started doing testings throughout to kind of get these, get this um, locked in continuity guide. That, so when we started shooting, as Chris was filming everything in and out of shooting, um, we knew exactly where to do all those pops throughout the five months that we were filming it. And Did obviously, I'm those, oh, sorry, those those stages were, you know, right from making somebody look young with plumpers and neutralizing out all their skin and putting all the flesh back into their skin right the way through to having four prosthetic pieces and stretch and stipple. So it, there was a lot of detail in all of the designs and every character was, it was very specific what we used on them to make it seem believable on IMAX, right? So, And just looking at it every day and, and uh, working with uh, Christopher Nolan, who just won Best Director at the New York Film Critics Circle. Um, so, I mean, awards awards season is, is kicking off strong uh, for him and Oppenheimer. So what, what what's it been like just to see the finished product you have to be extremely proud of the film it's it's i mean about to cross the billion dollar box office mark i think if it had if if it hasn't quite yet so what has this been like to just be part of a film that has had such a tremendous response yeah i mean it's exciting yeah we're we're thrilled i mean we're really thrilled for chris and emma and everybody um i think the the best thing of all of it is just seeing people's response to the film and knowing that we had the challenge of doing all of this on IMAX and knowing that we were having these tight, tight close-ups and people weren't taken out of it, that, that our job was to facilitate the story and to do that in a way that nobody came away sort of just thinking about what we were doing, but actually that it was, you know, just an integral part of the film. And then they thought about it afterwards has been really, really great. Well, Jamie Lee and Louisa, congratulations on the tremendous success of the film and your incredible work to help it all come together. And thanks for joining Gold Derby's Film Makeup and Hair panel today.
Thanks, Thanks for, for having, having us. us. <laughs>